So this is basically a continuation of the last tutorial, which was how to build stuff, which is basically this behavior. And in it, I mentioned that it was pretty useless if you didn't also have a save feature. And so what I did was if I press S, it will save. If I press C, it'll clear objects, just clears the scene. And if I press L, it'll load it back up again. And if I press delete, it'll delete the save file that it just created. So if you look down here, you'll see that all I really changed is adding these four scripts and this object. So it's not really all that different. So if we come over here, this is the script for the save data, which is pretty much where 99% of it happens. But first, I'm going to show you build. This is the same script as before, except for these two lines. I just basically deleted this new savable component off of it and gave it a name. So that's technically different. I just wanted to get that out of the way. So this is where the real stuff happens. Okay, first of all, you have to give it a file name. Uh, that's just set in the editor right here. The second thing that's set in the editor is these savable prefabs. So every time you have an object that you want to save, you have to save the prefab in this list somewhere. Okay, now an update. This is just basically the controller that takes the input. So S, D, L, C, that's the only controls for this. And it just debug.log and then calls a method. Pretty simple. Okay, so now this is really the save data structure, these two things. Now data is basically the entire save data. This will be the entire file and all it has is a list of assets. And the reason I didn't just make it a list of assets is because if you want to like include a version number like public int version, that's how you spell it, right? Okay, and this is the model for an asset. You have an asset number, I'll explain what that means later, and then you save its position and rotation with serializable vector three and serializable quaternion. Now, what these are is basically this script, now this is basically just a script where I copied off the internet, here's where I copied it from. It's basically a public XYZ, a constructor, and then these two things which allow you to convert it back and forth between serializable vector3 and vector3. And the reason it's serializable is because marking something serializable like this basically says, okay, this can just be converted into a series of zeros and ones. And so if we go back here, we actually see that both of these are marked as serializable as well. And in order for something to be marked as serializable, everything either has to be a primitive type, an array of some primitive type, or something that is also marked as serializable. What you need to know is basically serializable means converting to zeros and ones is easy, which is a necessary component of this because it saves it into a file which is just basically zeros and ones. Okay, these two are just small helper methods. This will get the file path, which is application.persistentDataPath. You can just debug.log it to see what it is, and then add it saves onto the end of that. And then if it doesn't exist, you just create a directory with that path, and then add the file name onto it, and then return that, because it's just a helper method. Now this method basically just checks whether or not a string can be saved as a file, because as you probably know, these characters are all illegal in file names. Okay, now here's the save method, which is probably the most important. So if it has bad file characters, which was these characters, then just debug a warning and return. Okay, first create a file with this save path that we just determined up here in this helper. And then what we have to do is find every object in the scene that has the savable component attached to it. And the savable component is this script I made down here. It's extremely simple. It's basically just a variable that you set in the editor and then a way to access that variable. So if we go back over to Unity, we see that on the cube prefab, I just have this savable component. And the only thing to note over here is asset number. Asset number has to be unique for each different prefab. If they're the same, then it will completely not work. And this is because it has to actually find the specific object by this number. So just make sure it's unique. It doesn't even have to be in order. It just has to be different. All right, so it finds every object with one of those components attached, creates a new list of assets, which remember is this struct we have up here, which just saves these three components, which is really all that we need to save this object. So we create a new list of assets, and then what we do is iterate through all of them in this for each loop. And to add the assets to this list, we have to get them off of this array. So savable.asset number, which is this, and then the position and rotation of it. And that's really all we need. So we go down here, and this is where it starts to get a little bit weird. So we create a binary formatter and then call dot serialize on it. We use the file that we created earlier. We just stick that in there and then new data, which is just this object that holds all the assets. And then we do assets.toArray, which remembers this assets. And then we set data's assets, 
which is here. Probably should have named them something different, but too late now. And what this does is basically just converts this to an array of bytes and saves it into this file. And this is why we needed it to be marked as serializable before, because if we take that away, it doesn't give you a compile time error, but I'm pretty sure it'll give you some error if you try to do that. So I'm going to test that out here. Yeah, see, it says not marked as serializable. So that's important. All right, and so if for whatever reason this fails, it will debug.log warning, which is what you just saw. That's why it's kind of important to make sure that this is actually in the try statement rather than just stuck here in the method somewhere. And then finally, file.close. Just in case it actually does fail, we still want to close the file. And that's really it for the save method. So now we go to the load method. So first we want to do clear scene, which is just find all the savable objects and then destroy all of them, which is what it does up here in update if you just press C. So just clear the scene, make sure there's nothing there, create a new data object, and then use this deserialize data method that I created. Now what this does is returns true or false based on whether or not it succeeded, and if it did succeed, it will give you a data object with all the correct values of what you just saved. And so what we do is we just go through all of the assets that it found in the save file and just instantiate all of them with these values. Okay, so in instantiate, this is the object that we actually need. This is where the savable prefabs variable comes in, that is right here. This is why it's important to actually add them to the list, because it needs to actually find it. So it just finds the first or default. I guess you could just substitute it with first if you wanted to. I like using first or default. And by the way, you will actually need to import system.link, and you should probably just import all of these because I'm using all of them. So this is kind of like a mini for loop, right? So you have your prefab, and it goes through all of the prefabs, gets the savable component off of it, and then compares the asset number. And if it matches, then it will return that. And so it can find the appropriate spawn prefab to actually create, and then just get the asset.position and asset.rotation off of that. And then you are good to go. Good, good to go. It's not going anywhere. And this is the deserialize data method, and it takes a file name and the out variable data, which we see here. Okay, so the first thing it does is create a new data object, saves the path into a variable, then it checks if the file exists, and if it does exist... Well, what the heck is this? Go away. So if it does exist, then it opens the file, and then it tries to read the data off of it. This is what you use to actually read the file. And if that fails for whatever reason, like it's not in the correct format, or maybe you specified the wrong file, it will just give you this warning and return false, saying that it did not finish correctly, and close the file. And if it does succeed, it will still close this file and return true. And this else statement is if it just did not find any file at all. And obviously that's not the intended function of this, so it returns false. And that's all the really difficult parts. So here's delete. I think this is really the only one that we haven't talked about, but basically if the file exists, delete the file, and if it doesn't exist, debug.log warning, file not found. Okay, pretty straightforward. And I could just end this here, that's really all you need to know, but I actually want to show you how you would create a new object that you need to save. So we are going to create a new sphere, we are going to add the savable component, and it needs a unique asset number, so I'm going to give it one because this has zero and there's nothing else. And then I'm going to save it as a prefab. And I'm also going to add the black material just so it stands out a bit and delete that. And then what I'm going to do here is add it to this list like this, except I'm actually going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to add a rigid body component to this. And before, what it would just save is the position and the rotation. And usually that's good enough. It's just with rigid bodies, I always like to save the velocity and the angular velocity as well. And so it continues going the same way it was going before. So we're going to need a few small modifications. So in the asset struct, I'm going to create public serializable vector three velocity and public serializable vector three angular velocity. No, no, not velocity, what the heck. All right, so we'll actually need to change some stuff down here as well. In new asset, we need to set the velocity to s.getComponent rigidBody.velocity and the angular velocity to s.getComponent rigidBody.angular velocity. Except there's a slight problem here. What if it doesn't have a rigid body? The cubes don't have a rigid body, and so what this will do is try to find a rigid body, return null, and then try to call null.velocity and give you a big fat error. And so what we have to do is save the rigid body up here, and then down here it found the rigid body, then you can get the velocity off of it, and if not, 
then return vector3.0. And if you don't know what this is, this is a ternary operator. You probably know what it is, but it's saying if this is true, return this. If not, return this. And we're going to do that down here too. r.angular velocity or vector3.0. And the only reason I'm putting vector3.0 in is because it really doesn't matter. Like, I could put really any vector3 here, it's just a matter of not trying to find something off of a null component, because it's not going to be saving velocity off of a component that doesn't have a rigid body to begin with. And that saves the velocity, but we actually need to load it as well. So first of all, we need to save this game object g, and then down here, we need rigid body r equals g dot get component rigid body. And then we can set r dot velocity to asset dot velocity and r dot angular velocity to asset dot angular velocity. And this is really what you need to do, except there's a slight problem with this as well. It doesn't always have a rigid body on it. And so you have to do if r then do this. And if not, then just ignore it. And with that, we are finished with all of this. So I'm just going to collapse everything back down to a reasonable order. And if we go back to Unity, I'm going to start this. And since we don't actually have a way of programmatically spawning a sphere, I'm going to pause it, drag it in, and then just move it to where I want it. So here we have a ball. And I'm going to actually rotate the plane a bit and just so we can see it rolling slowly. So I'm going to unpause this and then quickly save it and then clear everything. And if I load it back up again, we see it just creates the ball like it was. And it has the velocity it has before, which was very little. And if we save it more down here, like that, we can see that it has the same starting velocity. And of course, placing these blocks will still save just like normal. So that's basically it. Hope this was informative. I'll put the project file in the description because I know I learn best from just being able to open up the project and see how it works for myself, so you're welcome to do that. Alright, that's about it.